Okay, uh, today I'm going to be creating a style tile using Adobe Illustrator. Style tile is something I use to present to a client before I start building their website that gives them an idea of the look and mood, not so much the look, but more like the mood and the feel of what I think I'm going to eventually show them as far as color and maybe a little bit of content goes before I start designing their website. Uh, this is something that you may have seen me do before using Google Drawings. I like Google Drawings because it's really simple. I've had people complain to me and say, well, that's not really a professional tool. But hey, you save the finished product as a PDF so nobody knows whether you're using a professional tool or not. If you're doing this for work and they expect you to use Illustrator, sometimes it'll be Photoshop, here is how you would do this using Adobe Illustrator. Uh, to get started, I've already started up Illustrator, so to get started I'm just going to go over here and choose New or choose uh, Command N if I don't see the Start screen when my version of Illustrator starts up. Uh, when I get to the new Document dialog box, I'm going to name this thing Style Tile. I think I named my other one One, Two. Okay, so we're going to call this one Two. Um, for Profile, I'm going to use print and just to make things a little easier to myself uh, by default I'm put into points for units of increments uh, points don't mean a whole lot to me so I'm gonna bump things down to inches which will give me eight and a half by eleven and I want a horizontal orientation of this uh, as opposed to this might be called portrait this might be called landscape if I hover over it Ah, no yellow helper boxes. Okay, so portrait or landscape. I'm going to choose landscape or horizontal if you prefer that kind of terminology. When I've got that set, I'm going to ignore everything else here and I'm going to click OK. And it will give me a brand spanking new what looks like a sheet of paper. If I can't see the whole thing in the window, I'm going to go up to View Menu and Fit All in Window or Fit Artboard in Window. Either one will do the same thing. So very similarly to what I did using Google Drawings, again, this is, you know, we're using Illustrator, so it's going to require a little knowledge of the stuff over here in the toolbar, but I'm going to do things the same way that I would do in uh, any other application that allows me to create simple shapes and add photos. And somebody said to me last week, they said, oh, wait a second, you can add photos in Illustrator? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, you can. So I'm going to use my rectangle tool first, and I'm going to draw out a basic rectangle that's going to fill my entire background. So all that white area, that's the artboard. I want to cover that. Uh, by default, Illustrator gives me a white rectangle with a black outline. Don't need any outline at all, so I'm going to go up here to little controls in the path bar and I'm going to select none. So I see a little red strike through here uh, and I'm going to put a different color in the fill. There's like uh, the ones that show up in the little pop-up menu. They're not very exciting. I can also use a little color chip down here to kind of make it a little bit more personal. I like to leave uh, only web colors selected when I do this. That way everything I choose has a balanced hex code as opposed to a split hex code. So uh, the color hex code for white, F, 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 F. Uh, if I move my slider and select something else, uh, this is what I mean by balanced hex hex code, you'll see the letters and numbers kind of traveling in matched pairs other than things that say uh, something like 2C3D1F, which I try to avoid that because that might not display uniformly in all browsers. So I'm going to pick a color um, that I think would be suitable for a background, in this case uh, pale pale yellow FFFFCC, and I'm going to click OK. That will change the color of my rectangle background. Uh, I can also, I don't know if I feel like using the layers panel, I can set this up and set myself up with another layer. This is the cool thing about using Illustrator to do this. I can lock the layers as I go so that if I 
want to move things around. I don't accidentally bump stuff out of place. So I'm going to call layer two um, sidebar, even though that's not really what this is. It's just a design element that adds a color that will give my client an idea of the mood and feel that I'm going to hopefully produce when I start working on their website. So I'm going to go back to my rectangle tool, uh, draw another rectangle. I always go over the edge of my artboard because I don't want anybody to see any uh, little gaps of white when I save this as a PDF. I'm going to use that color chip again, choose another color, uh, slightly muted yellow, just something so that it looks a little bit different. I'm going to lock that layer and make another layer and I'm going to call this one swatches. So in the swatches layer, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool again. I'm going to actually put, just to start, a different color in here so you can see what I'm doing. But making sure I'm in the rectangle tool, I'm going to hold down my shift key to constrain proportions and make myself a square. Uh, because I don't want to redraw my square, I need four squares. Uh, denoting all the different colors that I'm going to use when I start actually building things. So uh, rather than redraw using the rectangle tool again and again, I'm going to hold down my Option key or Alt key and I'm just going to click and drag. And you'll notice when I'm doing these, I'm using smart guides to do this. Those little things that pop up, that pink line, minor pink, because pink is easy to see, uh, and those little uh, pink arrow things between each square, they just help me space stuff out so I don't have to worry about aligning things. Once I've got all these, I can change out the colors that are in here and make them something different. Again, what I think I might offer my client in terms of colors, just so they don't all look the same. Okay, so next, if I want to add something, oh, and incidentally, if I want to move these, I can move them anywhere. I'm shift selecting them so I can move them all at the same time, holding down shift still. I'm just going to drag them over, kind of center them top to bottom. Um, I can add photos in here too using. Uh, file menu and place. So from file menu, actually I should put these on their own layer, thanks for reminding me. Uh, so another layer, I'm just going to call it, I don't know, photos. From file menu, if I choose place, I can select a photo, hopefully, if I find one. Wow, we got a lot of spinning beach ball of death today. Okay, I'm going to go to Dropbox instead because I know there are images in here. Plants and florals, can't go wrong with that. Oh, it's great stuff. Okay. So anything that I choose from here that I think, I don't know, I'm going to look for things that kind of go with the colors that I've picked out, not necessarily something I would show my client. Uh, whatever I put in here, it's the original size of the photo. If I want to shrink the photo down, well, if I want to see everything, I can hold down the command key and hit the minus key and sort of shrink everything down. I'm holding down shift to do this because again I want to constrain proportions and not distort my photo. So 
So again, shift key, click on those little corners of the bounding box and I can reduce the size. If there's stuff like there's, I don't know what that was, if there's stuff I want to chop out of here, again I'm just sort of moving this into position, I want to line things up, maybe meet the top of that square swatch and I can use the arrow keys to move stuff over if I want. If I want to crop this what I can do is, as long as I'm in the same layer, I can grab my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle over this thing. By default, it's whatever color I used last. I'm just going to click and drag and make sure I use smart guides to line this up. Okay, so if I select, does that look like it's lined up? If I select, well that's definitely lined up, both the photo and the shape I just made, I can use this as a cropping tool by going to object menu, going to clipping mask and choosing make, and that will crop my photo. If I want to add another photo, I saw a whole bunch in there, nice stuff, uh, I will make another layer and add in another photo, give it a different name, and do the same thing that I did before by going to place and finding something else. Again, like I said, it's going to be the, the original full size photo, so it's huge, holding down shift, playing with little toggles on the bounding box, little uh, corner anchor point, what the hell are those things called? Um, whatever those little things are, handles on the bounding box, holding down shift so I don't distort. Okay, that's lovely. I'm going to do the same trick. This layer's locked. All my layers are locked, so I can't accidentally screw stuff up. So I'm going to go back to the rectangle tool. I want to make a square shape. I'm going to hold down shift while I've got rectangle tool selected and go back to my select tool, hold down shift, photo selected, rectangle selected, photos now selected. Do the same thing I did before. Object, clipping mask, make, and then I have another image cropped inside there. If I want to move anything around, like, I don't know, if I decide ugh, I don't like the position of the swatches. If I'm not sure I align the swatches, I've got alignment tools up here in the path bar. If I want to keep them all together and I think, oh, if I think I didn't evenly distribute them, I can use the distribute tools, vertical distribute, okay. Uh, I can always go to object group and group these all together if I've got them positioned the way I want them and I can let the smart guides help me and sort of move everything into position or use my arrow keys and move any, everything into position. And there you have a basic style tile. If I were going to share this with a client, I would probably go to file menu and uh, save as and make this into a smallest file size PDF so it doesn't uh, totally bork up their email inbox or if I'm sharing uh, online somewhere uh, perhaps via Dropbox uh, something that won't take forever to download.